Hello, everybody. It says we are live. Welcome, welcome. Hi. My phone never says we're live, though. I got a little notification that said okay, we're going live. It's always behind. Welcome, everybody. Hi. To chat about Tessa Dare's first this monthly book, Goddess of the Hunt. Yes. Which a lot the name was the where it's from was funny with her name. Oh yeah. Diana. I was like, oh okay. <laughs> but um right? Didn't they talk about Diana? What yeah, that? yeah. Um, that Toby was... Toby called her that. Okay. Yes. I was like, wait, her name's Lucy. Where <laughs> yeah, her name's not <laughs> Diana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Kind of I mean, I just, Diana. it's still a little weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is especially weird because the nickname doesn't come from uh, Jeremy. It comes from Toby. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just like, you know. I like the series name, though, where it came from. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Such an odd place to start for her. With the, what are they, like the milk dairy? What is it oh, called? The wanton dairy maid. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. I cannot hear anything. Oh, that was on me. I muted, I oh. muted everyone. That was, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I got very scared. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't touch anything, so. <laughs> um, yeah. What did you guys rate the book? I really liked it. I gave it four stars. Yeah. I also gave it four stars. I think I, the first time I read it was 2017, 2018, around there. Um, okay. And I gave it five stars then, but then I've read a lot more books and started rating things more. And so now I dropped it to, to four because, um, as I'm sure we'll talk about, Jeremy is a little bit overbearing. Um, I gave it four because I was expecting not to like it because of how many bad reviews are on Goodreads. Did you guys oh, see are? that? I, I didn't even I really hate this check. book. <laughs> Why? It's so cute. Yes. It was cute. I mean, I do think like when we the it wasn't it like the first scene she just like kisses him out of nowhere and you're like what the heck is happening she's like i need to practice and i was like what are you doing like <laughs> what are you that. doing <laughs> you what i love that though it just felt so it does random. feel like you're plopped in the middle of the story yes. i i can see that yes. but i i just like how i mean even though she's a virgin she wasn't innocent you know mm -hmm. Yeah. And she went after what she wanted. I mean, that is true. Yeah. Um, I love Melissa's comment about it was a lot of we're going to kiss a lot and never talk. Um, because this is actually because um, I read this. Uh, I reread this again um, last year for the But Do They Bang book club. And um, part of that is like we count how many people, how many times they bang. And this is by far Tessa's like steamiest book like they banged the most in this book than yeah. in any other book yes there's a lot of chemistry and um and they get interrupted a lot though yeah they do mm -hmm. but i do like a book where she like wants help getting someone else and mm -hmm. then falls for the person that like she's trying to get help with okay, and the whole good. letter was so funny and how oh, I like, know. <laughs> Mary Jane yeah. came about. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. If you like that type of book, there's um, Educating Caroline uh, by, technically it's like Meg Cabot, but it's written under Patricia Cabot. Um, oh. That one is also a really good one. Um, I have very fond memories of it. Though, to be fair, the last time I read it, I was probably like 19. And, you know, 19 year old Annie did make some choices. So it's possible I was an unreliable narrator. But I remember really liking it. I recently, like a year ago, learned that Pat that Meg Cabot wrote as Patricia Cabot. And I was like, I need to read these books. Because I loved the <laughs> yeah. books in high school. I read the, the, the diaries. I was like eighth grade, ninth mm -hmm. grade. Those. And yeah. I read her historical romances, too, mm -hmm. that she wrote. Yeah. I, I think yeah. they were YA, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually could go on an entire tangent about Meg Cabot uh, <laughs> just because I, so I recently did the, I don't know if you guys saw the like reading romance journey thing that was going around, um, yeah. but I did mine and it like four of like the nine slides are just about Meg Cabot because she like played such a huge part in my reading romance. Like I was, I found historical romance because I read her, um, they, they originally written for the Avon True Romance series, yes. but then they got uh, re like republished, I forget I, with whom, uh, but they got republished under her like new publisher and they got like, that's when they had the like cartoon cover. And that was my first like experience with historical romance. Um, and I remember, I think it was Victoria and the Rogue where mm -hmm. she was like worried about like spending the night at the other guy's house. And I was just like, what does it matter? And she's like, we're going to have to get married. And I'm just like, what? Why? Because I had never read historical romance before. And like now that's like such a staple of the genre. But in my head, I'm just like, why would she need to get married if she had spent like, what does that matter? So. Yeah, now that you say it, I think that those were my first historical romance books and I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You read the Avon line? Um, the ones that turn into a cartoon cover, yeah. Yeah. Cartoon covers. Yeah, the because so um some of them got republished. I think Be Beverly Jenkins ones got republished under different names, and then Meg Cabot republished them hers under like with the cartoon cover. So they have like the because the original one has a, a more historic. If I was at home, I could show you both because I have both. I didn't um, even realize they had original covers. Yeah. Well, I have the Beverly Jenkins ones. Let me get them. They're right here. Yeah, but they got republished a long time ago because I read them like back in middle school. Yeah, like like that. So their Meg Cabot had the, the her original covers also had a similar vibe, except they were like, more I like, they all look like this. Yes, but then um, I think in like two thousand. Oh, it was the early two thousands for sure. Yeah. It was the early 2000s they had gotten republished and they had like a cartoon cover um so if you like just type in i think nicole and the viscount or um victoria and the rogue and like the co the cover that pops up in under most iterations is like the cartoon cover that is like easily accessible this is such a tangent i'm so sorry <laughs> oh i have not seen that illustrated cover before oh, oh wow. interesting. the original cover is so oh. cute that's so yeah. ugly. That? I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it looks I, like a children's book, like the way it's illustrated. It, it's it's YA. It got published. Yeah. It's but it looks routine. like it's like for 12 year olds. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I read it when I was 12. It is oh, for 12 year olds. Because that's another one. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're YA. Yeah. They're all, they're, they're for the same audience. But that, that sounds like, like it's like, middle grade, not YA. That gives off a very different vibe. I mean, than it's kind of like those, those Simon and Schuster cartoon covers that we read yeah. too. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read those. Yeah. It's it's the, it's the same kind of like maturity level. So I yeah. Though I started reading like adult romance when I was fourteen. So like perhaps maybe I'm not the best judge. Um, but I, I didn't even realize that what I was picking up was adult romance when I picked it up. My dad actually bought it for me. I was at a thrift store and I was just like, hey, dad, do you want to buy, can I buy this book? And he's like, yeah, sure. It was like two bucks. Um, and then I read it and I was like, there's sex in this. There's sex in this. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah. did your dad know what he was buying you? Yeah. Um, but going back to, to this with Monica's comment. I do think that Lucy read very immature and Jeremy just yeah. felt how much older wasn't he not that much older than her and he felt a lot older. He was than like her. ten years older than her. Because he oh, really? was almost thirty and she was nineteen. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Really I forgot. Young. I forget yeah. that she is yes. like super young. And she mm -hmm. never even debuted yeah. or anything. Yeah. Right. Okay. But he was best friends with her brother. Yeah. So did her brother was he a lot older than her? I think Jeremy um, was a couple years older than Henry. No, because they, they, he talked about how um, they met when they were all first year at Eton. Um, oh. And so I think there, I think there, there's just a big age gap between the two, okay. between the two siblings. Okay. Her brother was fun though. I liked him. Yeah. 
I kind of wish that this was not the first of the series. I kind of wish that her brother had gotten a romance because I would have really loved to see the his relationship with his wife. Um, because like we only got to see a couple of scenes with them, but I, yeah. I remember the first time that I read this book, I like had to double check that it wasn't the first series because I was just like, oh, it sounds because well, I had something. Yeah. yeah. Who I thought it was funny the they kept um, bringing up that. Henry kept knocking up his wife <laughs> constantly. <laughs> like she had three babies in five years. So yeah. Yeah. I don't I listened to the audiobook and I actually read this early, so I don't remember this. I read it over a week okay. ago, so I mean I can kind of see it, but I didn't feel that way. I I agree. Um yeah, that that is actually a very good comparison. Um, I could very much see the Gone with the Wind vibes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> apparently I'm not alone. I'm like behind on I'm going or okay. So I did read her Mediator series. I really love that. Yeah, I read. I've met her three times, and I've read every single book she's published. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 to be fair, I like had a lot of like love for romance and a lot of love for books, but I didn't really have like a really like easy space for it. And Meg Cabot was like easily accessible to me and my library. Um, so she kind of just like became a huge part of what I read, though. I still haven't read her most recent book and it came out like in August. So um, her newer stuff, I don't love as much as oh, her older stuff. I agree. But, yeah. Like, what did you think of her friendship with um, the person that? Oh, <laughs> I forget names. Like the person that the guy she liked liked. Like she uh, was with her, and like she wrote the letter, and she's like, "What's I'm her gonna name?" The it's, letter, but it's you like don't an S. Get him, Sophia. Okay. Oh, Sophia. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I was like trying to figure out who you're talking about. Yeah, she's actually the heroine of the next book. Oh, okay. I was wondering. To no, is it with Toby, Toby is the hero of the third book. Oh, the Toby and her up together? <laughs> okay, I actually didn't want them to end up together. Yeah. Because they just didn't fit at all. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of clear from the way that he, like, talks about her and, like, oh, yeah. how she's, like, yeah. this, like, beautiful paragon of virtue and whatever, whatever. Um, but at the same time, like, does not actually know her and does not actually know what she, like, wishes for and all of that um and there's actually it's a pirate romance like the second book is a pirate romance uh so uh if you like pirate romances it's, it's, so it's a lot of fun everyone loves book two the most <laughs> I, I actually yeah i agree i think book two is is probably my favorite of the three um i i think it goes two one and then three um toby he's not my favorite <laughs> but i, I don't know I thought she was great. Like once yeah. they started getting to know each other and she's like, oh man, she's not actually as, as awful as I want her to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that, that that also comes from like youth, like use, like they're really, to be fair, she didn't necessarily learn the behavior of like women hating other women because of the way societal like places expectation. But like, this was kind of the first time that she had ever felt like true jealousy. Like she had felt jealousy before in, um, like uh in like not being included in things but this is kind of the first time that someone had something that she desperately wanted and like wasn't able to get it and like i could very easily see how she ended up in in the space where she is just like i i hate this girl she's the worst she is genuinely the worst and like sophia's like just like really nice and friendly and uh, yeah. imaginative and that kind of thing and then she's yeah. just like well i want to hate her <laughs> yes but I, I mean, she's also. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say she's also like everything that she's not. You know, like she, mm -hmm. like um, Lucy's always been free spirited, and she does whatever she wants because she's like her brother doesn't tell her to do anything, and then Sophia is all proper, and she's just like the first time that she's seeing someone who's so different from her. Mm -hmm. I know, but then she like made up the whole affair. Oh, uh, like, Gervais. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Lucy's all scandalized, like, "Oh my god, I, I know." Have this letter, and then it was so funny because then Sophia's like, "I made it all up," 
But then I forget why, but she's like, oh, wait, no, good. Do publish the letter. And she's like, oh, no, I can't do that now. Like, it was so funny. And then that's yeah, I love that too. like yeah. your convenience thing. Like Tessa Dare's humor still comes through yes. from her mm-hmm. first book. Yeah, um, I think she she wanted it published because there were no names attached to it. And so she yeah. wanted it to be like, like a, ooh, who is this? Like kind of like a lady whistle down situation where yeah, it's just yeah. like this gets published and people are like, let's speculate as who it is. Yeah, yeah. The, the little cabbage, the little rabbit. Yeah. And then she ran off at the end. I'm like, wait, what, <laughs> what happened? Is he real now? Uh, but and didn't it say it was with an artist? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you find out in the second book. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I mean, so it was nice because like it could have very easily been oh the woman that like the guy yeah. I like wants she's the villain I, we're gonna hate all women they're all my enemy and it wasn't like that so I did enjoy that. Yeah, though they still talked about Kitty and not the the nicest terms. Oh, her, her sister, sister. Yeah. I did think it was funny. Another moment I laughed out loud at was when they were like fishing as a friend group and she was like trying to act like she like caught this big thing so that she could get Toby's attention. And then it wasn't it her brother who's like, no, it's a, stuck on a log, you dummy. And then like cut it and then she falls into the yeah. lake. And I'm just like, oh my God, everything that could go wrong does. And she does not get his attention. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. then um, Jeremy got to hold her and, you know, bring mm-hmm. her to the house. Yeah. Yeah, I I did really like how they um uh do you do you need something? Okay, sorry. There's someone else in the in the room. Um, but uh, I did really like how um they like grew over time because like you know at the very beginning he's just like he doesn't really think of her anything but like his brother's younger annoying sister um but then like they slowly grow together and like she talks like there's that one scene where she talks about how like every part of her loves toby except like the back part of her ear and then it like slowly grows and she's just like i I mean i guess i have feelings i don't know how to how to deal with them because i've i've loved toby for so long um but i loved i loved that dynamic and how they kind of grew together Oh yeah. Yeah. Th- this is, I, I will say this is an interesting book in terms of tone because like the first half is like very silly and very like comedy of errors. And then you like get to the, get to his house and it all of a sudden becomes like very dark and there's a lot more discussion of like trauma and that kind of thing. And like, we do get a little bit of that in the first half with um, like some hints of like, that Jeremy doesn't like poaching and Jeremy doesn't shoot and that kind of thing. Um, but I did feel like there was kind of a major tonal shift once uh, they got married and moved yeah. to the the manor. Well, it also changed for Lucy because she was like, oh, now I'm like, whatever. Was he an Earl? I don't remember what he was, but she's like, I am yeah. like, in this life. like yeah. I can't. And they're like, you know, you can't like romp around the mud anymore. And she's like, what do you mean? And then Jeremy's like, yeah, you can't do that now. And so she's, unhappy so yeah yeah Yeah. and then i forget like who was it that told him they're like she's literally in love with you like have you not away she looks at you yeah so that was very much a wake-up call for him yeah Uh, like hooking up (laughs) i'm like how do you think she feels about you (laughs) yeah i don't know i think uh oh would it be possible to read the comments as you pop up okay Yes. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that was kind of this, because it was so funny because there was that moment where Toby was looking at her and Lucy was kind of looking at Jeremy, but also looking at Toby and like Jeremy was just like staring at Lucy being a, like, how do I feel? And that kind of, or at, the, at this point, I think he had, he had already known how he felt. Um, and then Toby like later was just like, yeah, I, kn- I knew that she no longer loved me and I was a little bit jealous, but like, that's okay. I yeah. thought it was interesting how everyone talked about Jeremy being so cold, but I never really got that here because we never interact with anyone else, you know, besides mm-hmm. all his close friends and family. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, that didn't come across for me, how he was so 
cold. True. I mean, I could understand the background to it, but we never really saw that. I I got more the vibe that like he he had a lot of feelings just kind of like buried underneath because I mean like when they when they moved over to the manor after they had gotten married he had spent a bunch of time like ignoring her and like not spending time with her. And, you know, for someone who does not know Jeremy particularly well, that could be viewed as like a very cold, very um, like cutting behavior um, because he's, you know, not interacting with someone who he has like feelings for and that kind of thing. I completely forgot. So um cheryl said i like the little boy character isn't that one that like almost oh, shot her yeah, yes like oh no come live with us and I'm just, yeah <laughs> he threw wait did it didn't he throw it was a rock shot it was oh, a yeah, shot. Like, something almost like killed her at some point when they were like running around looking for her aunt so yeah her aunt? It, it was her aunt uh it was not uh it did not nearly kill her it just gave her a welt um because yeah. oh, the way they reacted he was like yeah the way no, yeah because no. he okay. <laughs> He overreacts to okay. anything that could possibly hurt her. Did I okay? Did I misremember that? Because I'm pretty sure he acted like he yeah. almost killed her. Yeah, he thought. Yeah, because yeah, he, I think he shot at the boy. Yeah, and yeah, she so. like protected him. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So Monica agrees. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Who? Uh, who was Matilda? Uh, Aunt Monica. Matilda. Oh, the aunt. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Names. I can never. Yeah, I literally uh, have read this in the past two days. I was like listening okay. to the audiobook as I was like walking around Seattle. So, uh, it was you a surprisingly know. long audiobook, though. I think it was like 12, it was 12 hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. It seems yeah. longer than what the paperback looks like. It's, but it's 374 pages, which isn't yeah. too long. Yeah. I don't know. I, I borrowed it from Hoopla, and Hoopla goes up to like, Four times speed. So I just sit through it. Four times speed. You listen on four times speed? Yeah. For historical romances? <laughs> wow. Well, this is this is my like third time reading this book. Okay. I don't yeah. I'm like <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. But we have more confusion about the tone shift. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and he kind of turned cold when he went home, like the Abby brought out a little bit more, which I agree. Like that was where we shifted from, oh, she's trying to get Toby and, like, doing all these silly antics to now they're married and back. Yeah. There was a comment above that talked about the dinner stuff. That was hilarious. Um, Her moans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Yeah. That was so funny. And then um, he was like, you don't, you didn't order dessert this time? That's my favorite part. <laughs> Oh man, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, someone else said they loved Lucy's relationship yeah. with her aunt. I feel yeah, like we should all she said was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> lovely. There was such a big cast in this book. I feel like not a lot of historicals have such a big like they had their friend group and they were aunt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was like the doctor and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. I feel like usually if there's this big a cast, it is usually like a setup for an entire series. Like I'm thinking of like the Ravenels for um, by Lisa Kleypas and like all of those have like a pretty large cast. Um, yeah. Long, long yeah. Series. Like some, some of Sarah McLean's books also have like a pretty big cast, but they're more towards like the later part because like she kind of has yeah. just like, put everyone in the in the world um I'm trying to think of who else but yeah I feel like for a book series that only has three books for a trilogy this has a particularly large cast yeah um, yeah but but she did a really great job like everyone yeah. you understood you know their characters you liked everyone mm -hmm. mm, okay uh so they said Jane Eyre is one of their favorite classics they love the gothic themes which is why they like the tone shift in the second half hmm. okay. yeah. I didn't realize the Ravenel series has seven books yeah I mean it's technically it's six the seventh one isn't really like Ravenel's mm -hmm. yeah I didn't like the seventh one so <laughs> I've only read four five six and seven mm. I've read all of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I 
the the last one was a uh, was interesting. I loved it. <laughs> Really, yeah. I didn't. I didn't dislike it as much as everyone else did, um, but I would. I did not love the ending. I don't know if I. I don't know if like enough time has passed that I can like. Oh, I have that in my review time. in the epilogue. Yeah, I, I was like, what? Why? Yeah, like especially because so much of the themes of it yeah. were about like adopted family. Um, yeah that I was just like, really? Like you you did all of the work so that this did not have to happen and they could still have a family. And then, yes, I remember being very annoyed with that. Yeah. Um, I need to go back and read because I know people love Devil in Winter, not Devil in Winter, Devil in Spring. Devil in Spring, that's my yeah, favorite that one. That one's fun. That one's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, so I have to go back and read the Ravenels too. Um, I mean, I like having lots of characters in the book, then it adds more to mm -hmm. the characters, and it like they allow for more antics for them to do and like get yes. involved in and like ruin things for them. Yeah, and I always notice when the characters they never interact with anyone else, and it kind of feels yeah. one dimensional. Yeah, yeah, and it just gets boring mm -hmm. when they're only with one another, or like they just have like their sibling, and that's it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I am um, curious, like, what, because th this is, like, her first trilogy, and, like, her first two trilogies were published by a different publisher, um, and so I think they, they also read very differently than um, her Avon books do, and so I'm curious if, like, part of the reason why this had such a full cast, despite the fact that it's only a trilogy, has to do with, like, the fact that she didn't necessarily write a lot of other things and she wasn't publishing with Avon. Um, and I imagine that they, uh, though I have no, I've never, I don't really know Valentine books. So I was going to say, do they publish a lot of historicals? Yeah. I'm Valentine? pretty sure they publish the original, like the Maya Banks, um, um, Scottish yeah. Highlander ones. They published. Even though then that changed publishers <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. The new one. That's not out. That's never right. coming. But, but yeah, they published a lot. What was that? It switched publishers, the one that hasn't come out yet, right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I didn't realize this was 2009. I feel like that's not that long ago. Oh, and yeah. um, Julia Quinn, too. Like, the, the covers that look like this, they were also, I'm pretty sure, Valentine. Huh. The Mr. Cavendish yeah. and the Duke of Wyndham. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've seen the original version of those covers. I think I've only seen the Avon ones. Yeah, it looks like this. It's got a big bar in the middle, some yeah. person on the top. So those books went and were published by Avon? The same book? What do you mean? Annie, you said that you've only seen the Avon cover? Yeah, I think I've only seen, or maybe I don't I'm thinking think books. I don't, let me double check. Hmm. I don't know, but I feel like she's only been writing, I mean, I guess 12 years is a long time, but she's so popular. And I don't know, like, what series made her that popular. Like, was she popular before the Girl Meets Duke series, or was that the one that really put her? Oh, so these ones? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so the, the, the duology. I thought they were published by Avon. They oh, are published are they? by Avon. Oh, yeah, okay. you can see... The little Avon symbol. Okay. Oh, I guess the whole cover thing was a trend back then. I don't know. Yeah. Avon's jumping on those trends. And yeah. yeah. I don't like it. I mean, at least this looks more romance, like with this at the mm. bottom. But yeah. She actually had an entire um, blog post about how, like, the creation of this particular cover. Um, and I read it and, like, kind of like the pitfalls that happened when she was trying to create uh, this. And, like, there was. Like, I think there, it went through, like, three or four different versions or something like that. You can read it all about it um, when I got back. She, she's the reason I got back into historical romance because the, I took a huge break when I was in college because I just, like, didn't really have time to sit down and read. Um, and I, um, I just, like, was at a random library and I picked up, um, do you want to start a scandal, create a scandal? The one with the pink dress. Mm -hmm. Um 
And I was like, oh, these are really fun. And they're really funny. And so I like literally read all of her books, um, just like went through her backlist and then uh, read her entire blog that she had posted about all of it. Um, and so, though it's been a couple of years, so I don't remember all of the details. Are you talking about the cover or the book? Yeah, the cover. Okay. Hmm. I'm creating this cover. Did she have a lot of say in the cover? Um, I think she had more say with this one than the Avon ones. There is not a step back. Listen, listen with Precious. Precious, there's a there's a comment yeah. at the very back. This is because you can actually see this is the the OG because yeah. it's like got the I have it too. Yeah, the embossed text. Yeah, race text. Are these yeah. out of print though? They are out of print. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So it's only the ebook now. I think so. And doesn't she have another series that looks like the same cover? It's slightly similar, oh, uh, but it is yeah. the the, the horse. Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Club. yeah. I, I did not find those. Do you I not, not like the first book? <laughs> Wasn't he yeah, like really obsessed with horses? Yes, that's yeah. why it's like I don't care, man. This is so unattractive. <laughs> um, yeah, I I really like the third one though, uh, which is funny because I don't love Jeremy. Um, in this one because he's overbearing but in the third book he's also kind of overbearing but um it i feel like it's slightly more warranted because the heroine is deaf um and so uh he's like worried about her all the time um but she does have like this really great moment where she's just like dude i am a grown woman who can make my own choices like don't try to like dictate how i live my life um so yeah i really liked the third one um but yeah, it's been I I uh I forgot a thought. Sorry. I've I'm very sleep deprived. Uh Jess knows this, but for everyone else, I'm at a dance weekend. And so um I was up until 3 a.m. this morning and then I woke up again at eight and started dancing at 10 and have been I danced for like four hours and then I'm dancing again from eight until three tonight and then doing the classes again tomorrow. So and I did this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm like, I'm a little delirious. Um, I got my copy from, I don't know, I used bookstore, I think. So yeah, this yeah it's been a long book. time. Yeah. yeah. I got, I got this. I got my first copy from half price books, but it was like really thrown, like, like torn up. Um, so there was like a rip on the side and it just like looked kind of like terrible, but I was just like, well, it's out of, it's out of print. So I'll, I'll keep it. But then I was at the used bookstore um, back in Sacramento and that like this one was is like in really good condition and I was just like well I will I will just buy it it's fine and I donated the kind of slightly ripped up version to the used bookstore so there it's still in circulation but uh, um, and it, do like, you guys have the rest of the series yeah I don't remember I bought ones I have a couple more with the same style but I don't know if they're the stud club or mm. yeah this is the only one that I have yeah I um I have almost all of her books the only ones i don't have are the ones that are i haven't found with step back so like um lady of midnight which i'm told is like impossible to find and week to be wicked and romancing the duke those are the three that i'm missing um i did try to like bid on a week to be wicked but it ended up costing like 25 bucks and i was just like eh, that's a lot for one book <laughs> Yeah, I think I got most of them from this one lot. And it was two dollars mm. each for each book with a step back. So I was like, dude, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which I wonder why she jumped from Valentine to Valentine, I don't know how to say that, to Avon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't know. Um, I mean, I think Valentine just didn't publish historical romances anymore. Mm. Okay. Because right now, I mean, they're still publishing right now, but they publish stuff like they used to publish um, J.R. Ward. They published like the hardcover stuff. They did? So, yeah, it was the the Bourbon King or Bourbon series. Oh, yeah. That was Valentine. Oh. Okay. I have all of them up there, so I'm looking this fine. Because it's mm -hmm. been Berkeley for a while. Mm -hmm. And then she jumped shit to gallery. Yeah. But yeah, I, just, I think it's just because Valentine didn't publish historical romances anymore. Yeah. 
I wonder if like authors prefer Avon or like what makes them go to like St. Martin's Press or um yeah because Lisa Kleypas was with St. Martin's Press for Hathaway's yeah. mm, I didn't know that yeah and then she went to Avon yeah I, I wonder like Avon has like the huge historical romance authors yeah I, I yeah, wonder if it's such a name to, too, you know, yeah. the brand. Yeah. I wonder if it has to also do with like marketing and like the availability that they have, because if they have such a large historical romance department, then they probably have more like marketing money and like, like all of the yeah. resources associated with that. Because I know that they've also published regular romance, um, but they are much more well known for um, historical. Historical. Um, oh, forever so does historical. Yes. But do they do, are they, I feel like Forever is going more towards the um, traditional, the trade. Traditional trade. Line. Yeah, the trade. Because yeah. I know that yeah. Alexis is Hall new one. Yep. Uh, I need to, I need to post my review for that one because I got an arc, but I'm so, I'm so bad about posting on time. Did you like it? I enjoyed it. Um, I, I like yeah, I, it, it was very interesting. Um, a part of what I really liked about it is that it has a trans heroine, but like the main crux and the like issues that they run into are not necessarily because she is trans, um, yeah. which is like, I feel like rare, you know, like a lot of times, like, like not to say that it doesn't play a part, but um, it's not like the driving reason as to like why they are not together and why, like what the, the main conflict of the story is. I still need to read that one. Yeah. Um, is there, Annie, you would probably know, is there any update on her new book? <laughs> no. no, there is not. It's so weird. Like, is she just not writing it? Or, yeah, it's right. Been three years. She, so she t tweeted out in like 2019 that it was done. It's been a year. Like, I, I know. Through COVID, we haven't gotten a new one. And that was when people were obsessed with the Girl Meets Duke series. And it was yeah. like, at its peak. I haven't heard anybody yeah. talking about it lately, but like a yeah. few years ago, and it was supposed to be number four. Yeah. I mean, like, never... I, like, I think that I, I could not imagine it not coming out because like, partly also because she's a scientist. Like there, it, I feel like there are so few scientist historical romance heroines. And I just, I'm very, I'm very frustrated. It was like the perfect time to come out. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. Like, I, so, what I, if I had to speculate, it was probably done, but then she realized that she didn't like the way that the story was going. Yeah. And that's she, what I was like, gonna... she took COVID and like reworked it and is still reworking. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I but don't she, know. She like hasn't published a book in three years. Yeah. I know. I know. Does she so. ever talk about it anymore? I've Twitter? not heard. The I've only thing heard. I saw was when the bizarre Amazon posted like 2026 right. or something as the release date. And pe but that wasn't right. And she was like, no, that's not right. I don't know what did that. And I was like, is it not right? <laughs> she's going to be, she's she's gonna be the new Maya Banks. Seriously, <laughs> that's what this comment says yeah. between Tessa yes. and Maya Banks. Like, now Maya Banks, I understand, because she's going yeah. through like serious. I don't mm -hmm. even know if she's right again, honestly, yeah. for like yeah. the rest of her career because. It's been like 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My bank. Yeah. Though I do love that um uh crap what like I think the the handle is Reads Romance, but I cannot remember her name. Teresa. But she like Teresa. Yeah, Teresa. Yeah. She keeps posting about how she it's like her hold. It's just like forever hold. It's just it is. The and yeah, her other like, series. The, wedding is pushed back again. The KGI series, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that series too. Maya Banks was like a machine though with her series yeah. for so yeah. long. Yeah, I need to read more Maya Banks. I I've only picked I've only read a few of hers. I have I haven't read as much as I I'd like to. Yeah, so Francesca just said mm -hmm. Maya Banks KGI series. Yeah, which I was reading that was good, but Berkeley doesn't like publish that kind of book anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't but think. I don't remember like. When I started blogging and stuff like that, they were coming out with like their mass market paperbacks. So like the Brooklyn Bruiser series by Serena Bowen mm -hmm. and like the Monica McCarthy um, mm -hmm. Romantic Suspense series yeah. and like Elle Kennedy's. Like they were all mass market paperback like trilogies mm -hmm. that were like romantic suspense. Do they even publish romantic suspense anymore? I don't know. Yeah, they do. 
I always see them on the forums and I never request them because I never read them. (laughs) But they're not as common, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think Megan Crane is like the only thing that I can think of right now. She has a couple romantic suspenses with Berkeley. Doesn't she have like the navy ones, the seals? Maybe. She also has like a naturey, like Alaska related Mm. one. Oh, okay. But is, this, is she the one who writes cowboy romances too? Mm. That's someone else. That might be someone else. I'm that I mean, that's probably Jessica Clare. Oh yes, Crane Clare. Those are just similar. <laughs> <last things. laughs> um, which publishers are the main ones for historical romance? It's Avon, St. Martin's Press. Yep. Um, Forever does some does some right in that source books, yeah. and then yeah. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. Berkeley sometimes. Okay, but Berkeley's are like Berkeley. watered down. As I well. know, but they used to. Yeah. Well, I did. Oh no, I think that one's forever. I recently just read the Lady Wisteria, the 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 oh, one with the Berkeley. That was so weird. weird. It was a weird one, but I actually kind of enjoyed yeah. it. Oh, so, so the the Flying Houses one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that I'll I'd. I feel like I would like the second book since I've read the first one because I it took like kind of it kind of in the the way that I was talking about how I didn't understand why like staying over one night meant that you had to marry someone. Um, I feel like now that I understand the rules of the world a little bit better, I would really enjoy the second book. And I also thought that the yeah. pose was really interesting. I felt like the um, it's so rare to kind of read that type of like whimsical book. Um, so it was, a uh, it was interesting. What did you tap out after five chapters? The book that I'm talking about? I'm Leslie? assuming the Lady Wisteria one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Any like cartoon trade paperback historical romance has been coming out. Like even Evie Dunmore. Mm. I'm like, I don't, it's not giving me the same vibes that like, mm. oh yeah. Well, historical romances do. Yeah. But that's what I, everyone I love her, her first one, but then I wasn't into the second one. I, I love the second one. I loved the second one. The second one was my favorite, um, but it took me a really long time to get into it. I actually like took a pause about 20% of the way through because it just like wasn't grabbing my attention the way that I wanted to. Um, and then I like picked it back up like a couple weeks later and like finished it like almost immediately. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things where it was like a very slow start for me, but then yeah. it ended up being my favorite of the series. Okay. The, I admit the beginning was very slow. I think this is funny. Uh, I'll watch the movie, but my reading attention span cannot, which is true. Yeah. Um, but also, going back to Maya Banks, I'm surprised because in the Historical Hellions live show I was doing on Friday, we talked about how some people have ghostwriters for authors who are like literally not alive anymore and people are still publishing under their name. And oh, who? Yeah. Oh, who was it? It was the one that uh, plagiarized Nora Roberts. Um, which I'm like, why would you want to carry on her name anyways? It, what was her name? I don't remember. But she's the one in the 90s that got caught, pop, play, like, literally taking her scenes and putting them into her own books from Nora. And, like, Whoa. it was a huge thing. Yeah, and they were both represented, I think, by the same publisher, too. So, like, that was whole, really bizarre. Um, but she passed away in, like, 2012, 2013, and she literally has a 2020 release. So right. like someone is still writing under her name, but don't okay. they put it like? Yes, but don't they have it like her name, giant font, and then another name? No, the ghostwriter under it. Oh, no. there's no ghostwriter name under no, it. Just her name. Thank you. Oh. Everybody knows what it was. Yeah, but I'm surprised. Like with Maya Banks, they wouldn't just do that because it yeah. says at this point I'd take a ghostwriter to get Rusty's <laughs> whatever name for the final mm-hmm. book. It's like, yeah, finish, like they're going to sell. It's my banks if you put her name on it. Yeah. Though I wonder if they're worried that people would be able to tell that it's a ghostwriter. They have ghostwriter. Writing is kind of simplistic. Know. So I wouldn't say it's anything too difficult. I don't know if I'd be able to tell. Well, yeah, like all the, I mean, I guess for Robert Pattinson. Not Robert James Patterson. Wow, James. Robert Patterson. <laughs> James Patterson. They always have like written with or for his because yeah. you know he is not That's writing the thinking, ten yeah. books he releases. Yeah. But that they just say her name. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Maybe their family has some sort of contract with that. Mm. I mean, I don't know what's going on with her. So. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. Does yeah. anybody? I mean, I don't know. What was it? Julie Garwood and, well, not right. But Julie Garwood, she's literally 70. I think someone said she's in one of my board. videos and she, her book is coming out this year. So they're like, oh, well, is she, did she actually write that? Uh, Beverly <laughs> Jenkins is in her 70s too. Oh, uh, is she? Out. Yeah. I forget she was talking about something of like in the 60s when she was like a teenager or like a or like in her 20s in college and I was like that was the 60s. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it was really funny. I mean yeah. cuz the we were got talking about the Faded Mates um Trailblazer series that they're doing and mm -hmm. they interviewed Beverly Jenkins. They had um Amanda Quick on there. Who's Jane Ann Krentz, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's in her seventies. Um, and they're still doing their interviews and still coming out with books. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm there are literally dancers that uh were alive in the twenties, uh, who are at the event that I'm like at. Like they're a hundred years old. They were like the original jazz dancers. That's amazing. Um uh, yeah, I've uh I've danced, I met I met Frankie Manning before he died. Um, I met, uh, um, anyway, this is all like swing dancing things, but yeah. So like there are, there are still like still dancers though. Um, Frankie Manning's partner stopped dancing after he died. She's just like, after Frankie died, I don't want to dance with anyone ever again, mm -hmm. which was like sweet and also very sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Nora is writing like crazy. Is oh, she yeah. in her seventies? So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I assume Nora writes, do you think Nora writes everything herself? Yeah, after so many like ghostwriter scandals, and she's like oh, cracking yeah. down on them. Yeah. She one hundred percent. What she right. does, <laughs> anybody who says any, and we're talking about her. She owns a mountain. I didn't know she owned a, her own mountain. <laughs> she can <laughs> afford it. <laughs> yeah, literally, I think my there's an entire shelf just dedicated to Nora Roberts at my used bookstore. Just at like every every bookstore. Case, like a whole bookcase is full of her books. Yeah. Yeah. And Lacey, have you read Nora Roberts? Like Nora I read my Roberts? first one for oh. the first time like a month or two ago. It was one of her very first published books. Um, so it's those shorter, almost Harlequin styles. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It was so good. <laughs> you like you can see how like I, I originally read her in Death series first, but yeah. I read the Nora Roberts this year. And I was like, oh, I can kind of see like the vibes from mm -hmm. the in-depth characters, especially the hero in this early book. Yeah. But it was great. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if I read her books, I feel like it'll be too like fiction and not enough romance. Mm. That's the vibe. Well, her later stuff, probably, yeah. Okay. But she has a whole bunch of, you know, Harlequins and like I've, romance heavy stuff yeah i've not i've not read i read nora roberts when i was in high school but i haven't read a whole lot of it and i remember thinking because at the time i was reading like carly phillips and um like uh oh god who else um like vicky lewis thompson uh, thompson and um susan elizabeth phillips susan mallory uh Man, these names all sound very similar. Kind of weird. Anyway, um, and I remember think like picking up a Nora Roberts book, and I was just like, "This is not steamy enough." Yeah, Diana gabbled on seventy. She does not look seventy. She's seventy. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I just I don't know. I'm I'm scared that she won't be for me because she just writes so much. And like whenever yeah, she's more like romantic suspense kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I do want to get more into romantic suspense. Yeah. Oh, this is funny. They thought that Nora used a ghostwriter before the whole debacle because there's no way. Like, there is no way. How is she writing like four or five books a year? I mean, she talks about it all the time, though, because people ask her and she like literally it's her nine to five job. You know, yeah. all she does is write. Well, I guess she doesn't yeah. have to worry about her own marketing and stuff like yeah, other yeah. authors do. Like she can just literally write all day. But how does she come yeah. up with those? Like, like how I feel like she would like burn out at some point. I know because yeah. the In Dead series is like fifty something books right now. Yeah, I mean, I um so I Meg Cabot has actually talked about this, um, and she 
uh, like that's her nine to five job as well. Um, and she actually has like a page amount that she has to write every day. And she's just like, it does not matter what it is. Like it could be garbage that I scrap does not matter. I have to write this amount. And she actually has an accountability buddy. And if they do not meet, meet their page or word, like, uh, amount, um, there is going to be a public donation in their name to a cause that they hate. So that, so like, that is like how they hold themselves accountable. Um, oh my God. Interesting. And it's, <laughs> and it's not, cause it's not like a large, it's like a dollar or something like that. But because of the way that like laws are written, their names, like it doesn't, it's, you don't have to, it's the amount doesn't have to be disclosed, but the oh, fact wow. that, that you donated has to be disclosed. Okay. And so as a result, cause she's like a private individual as a result, like that is like, that is the punishment. If you do not meet this, then you end up uh, donating a dollar to a Republican campaign. And if yeah, that's, that's like, so interesting. But like creatively, I feel like that would be so exhausting. Like, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't but know. I know this it says some people are just determined to get as many books out a year. Usually it's in their contract. But is Nora con contracted to write four books a year? Five, six, seven, how many she writes? She writes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She does. But she can do it. So, I mean, why, yeah. <laughs> why not? Is Meg Cabot still publishing? Yeah, yeah. she is. She the published, little Big uh, Island series. That is yep. not good. But that's, <laughs> that's her latest series. <laughs> yeah. But it's. Yeah, I mm, I love Meg. Me I don't too. love her new. I, mean, I, mean, I love her, but I don't love that series. <laughs> yeah. I did love the Mediator series in high school. Yeah, that's my favorite. Is it supposed to become a show? It I it so it, a movie so, or a show? Yeah, it was supposed to be a show. Um, but the one eight hundred Where Are You series that uh, developed into a TV show kind of flopped, and so they were hoping that it like did well because they were trying to capitalize on the um, Princess Diaries demographic because they're like, oh, this is like you know, um, and uh, it did not it did not go according to plan. I think it like you can like watch reruns of it on like super late late at night on like Sci Fi or the Sci Fi Channel or whatever. Um, but yeah, so there's like it's I forget the exact name for it, but there there is a TV show based on the One Hundred Where Are You series, um, and because that didn't do well, the Mediator series never. But who was reading that One Hundred Where Are You series? I don't even know. I that read series. it. I, I read it. it and loved it. Series with Jessica. <laughs> I, I yeah, I don't know why they chose that <laughs> series of all her books to adapt, but yeah, I did read I mean, it and I did love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, it, well. it was I, it was it was really good. It was really good. Um, I uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I so they were the media. I I will say that the Mediator series I enjoyed more, but not by a much. Like I think that if you like the Mediator series, you would have liked the One Hundred Where Are You series. They have a very similar vibe. Um, I but, also yeah. love the the adult spinoff that she wrote. Yeah, uh, for Mediator. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I uh, I was so that, happy. I I was too. I was too. Um, and actually, like the ebook that she released with the uh the proposal was because yeah. her publisher was just like, it has been so long, <laughs> and they have loved these characters so much. You cannot not include the proposal. What are you thinking? Everyone would be so angry. And she's just like, yeah, oh, I know, uh, Bella. <laughs> okay, I I was mad though. They didn't include their first time, or it was yeah. like very yeah you know fade to black sort of thing they waited and this this all this time in the book series yeah. and in real life like yeah. our time too <laughs> to give us their first time after they got married yeah. and we didn't get it i i mean i the, it was very similar with the princess diaries too because the um like there was like the 10th book that came out in like 2009 2009 10? because yeah. yeah, the tenth Princess Diaries. It was. I read like three. <laughs> yeah, I read. I read the entire series. Um, and I remember being very annoyed when Michael and her broke up because I was just like, she would never break up with Michael. And then there was a huge hiatus, and we just didn't yes. get get to see stuff for a while. And then the tenth book came out, and I was just like, well, what happens? Like, and because. And like the reason why it's like actually written in the stories, the reason why she had not been writing a diary is because she had been writing a book. And at the same time, the historical Meg, romance. 
Yeah, Ransom My Heart had come out. And um, I had I read them around the same time because I had requested them in the library because I was like so excited. Um, again, talking about my cabin, like I will go on the, I will go on this rant. <laughs> um, but I was like, I was so, so incredibly excited. And it like it did wrap up very, very nicely and it was like very sweet. And um yeah. and then the the royal wedding came out in 2012 maybe 2012 2013 because it was the it was the jumping off point for the new princess diary series featuring her younger half sister um so like there's a mi middle grade series um and she found out that she had a younger half sister um that her dad had because he was kind of a playboy um <laughs> that uh you know um and so uh it like it kind of came out in conjunction so it was like from mia's point of view and then you can read the the middle grade series to kind of figure out like what Mia and michael are up to now like they have twins now and it's like they're adorable and married and Aww. doing all of that yeah i mean also why i don't want to get into a robber so is <laughs> what this comic <laughs> is overwhelming so much because where do you start from the beginning. Yeah. That's what I did. No. <laughs> Are you going to read all of her books then? No, 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 I'm not. No. There's not enough time in no, my life right, right. to read all of Nora. Like, right. she's been publishing for so. Oh, I know. So angsty. So angsty. Jesse, I've reread Twilight a million times. Like, I would I check know. it out from the library over and over so I could reread it. So I had that book memorized. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, the time travel stuff. So I know. good. So I, I was like, because because I genuinely did not know how they could end up together. Like, I genuinely was just like, this is just, they're just going to, like, forlorn for each other from afar. Also, like, one of her Warrior series is also pretty angsty. <laughs> like, I think all of her books are kind of angsty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I really wish she'd write more oh. angst in her. Right. She does have a big backlist, though, and it can get a book. Yeah. Think of that. I'm not as big as Nora, but yeah, pretty extensive. Um, this is true, though. I love Chris Pine in Princess Diaries, too. She actually, so the movies exist in the universe of the books, and she actually commented on the movie, and she was just like, I would never break up with Michael, but the guy who plays the, whatever his name is, is very cute, and I could see why movie Mia was, like, interested in him. <laughs> Book That's Mia so would perfect. never, but movie Mia, okay. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Nora has fantasy too. Oh yeah, paranormal yeah. and the spy. She has everything. Yeah, but she doesn't have a lot of historical. I remember I tried to look for. She has two. Yeah, she doesn't have that many. We might read Rebellion for historical Hellions. Ooh. Yeah, which is her one historical. Just because we we're talking all about Nora on our. <laughs> Um, I, really wanna, wanna, oh, I was I was just gonna say I really want to join for Annie's song because I'm like I feel like that would fit <laughs> for Annie. <laughs> I mean we haven't picked our co-host yet. We need to do that. So if you are interested. Um but do we want to talk about our next book? Because I know Annie has to skin out. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Because I'm going dancing and I have to grab dinner first, otherwise I'm like, literally expire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're reading reverse hair of well actually no. It's more like a threesome. But it's Tay James. We're reading Tay James Honey Trap, which is the first book in the Guild series. And it's probably going to end on a cliffhanger because all her series do. <laughs> How long is that series? I think it's only three books. Okay. Where did you get special editions from? It was a, called The Fabled Night. Where did I you think find all these? It's it's an Australian book box. Did you have to pay a lot in shipping? Yeah, I did. Oh, God. But <laughs> they looked so pretty. I, I remember seeing... They, I remember I didn't want to get it because it was so expensive because they only released the first one. But then everyone got it started getting it in the mail, and it was so pretty. I was like, shoot. I really regret not getting it. But then they came out with a new box with the complete series. So, oh, that's coming. Those, those yes. are pretty. Oh, those are pretty. Yes, those are so nice. Them. We're back in like the the edges. Yeah. It's like foiled and 
everything. Yeah, it looks really nice. It's expensive, but. <laughs> oh, you bought it back in April? Yes. 135 Australian. How much that is in US dollars? It's like around 100. Oh. Okay. That's not too bad. Interesting. I've never heard yeah. of that. All right. Well, yeah, that's what we're reading next. So I'm excited awesome. to read some more Tate James because I really like the Haiti series and mm -hmm. the series. That was the only two I've read by her. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'll be on Lacey's channel next month. I guess that's it. Everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, have yeah. a super fun time talking and yes. reading to theirs first. I'll have to continue the series. Maybe I'll get them on audio because yeah. I'm intrigued. They're all, do you, does your library have Hoopla? Yeah. They're on my Libby. Yeah. They're, I, they're not on mine. Um, I don't know why, uh, but they're all on, on Hoopla. Um, mine had a whole list on Libby, so that's why I did it on Hoopla. Yeah. Um, so at least the, um, the first three and then the first one of the next one um and then the next two are audible exclusives but they're uploaded on youtube uh, for audio books for the you... stud club or for the, the stud, stud club oh. yeah so i don't you, i don't you know don't have to, you don't have to read those <laughs> <laughs> i, I i'm just them. kidding <laughs> yes just was not lacy's cup of tea yeah um but yes, thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for letting me wax poetically about Meg Cabot and all of the. I know I learned so you. much. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I have so much more information. You have no idea. <laughs> so funny. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone for joining, and we will see you next month. Bye. Bye.